Welcome back to JMX, and today we're going to explore Mexico City. First off, we're visiting Museo Nacional de Antropología, or in English, the National Museum of Anthropology. But wait, the thing is, today, the museum is only one of the places we plan to visit. So, after arriving, we agreed that we only had an hour and a half to explore the museum. After paying the entrance fee, let the timer start now. After we enter the museum, we were greeted by this picturesque column with water that rains around it. I find this very cool and makes you wet, depending on how close you are to it. So we decided to start in the halls on the right side of the museum. Since anthropology is the study of human societies and cultures and their development, according to Google, I think it would be best to first get a context of where humans scientifically came from and start learning about human evolution. With that said, I think it's only fitting that we were greeted by Lucy, who is an Australopithecus apparensis, or basically one of the ancestors of us Homo sapiens sapiens. Aside from Lucy, in this area, we also get a lot of information about how our ancestors used to live, how they form a community, how they evolved, etc. Now, unfortunately, a lot of the information in the exhibits are in Spanish, and I don't understand Spanish yet, so I just did the next best thing and choose to admire the things that I see and pretend to understand anything. <laughs> now, I can actually just use the Google Translate app on my phone, but I only have a limited time and I want to explore as much of the museum as I can, so I decided to just move along. Next up is the history of people who once lived in the Americas. The tools and artifacts that they use in their everyday lives, the ice age, the migrations, and other things are showcased all around. In the next hall after this one is the Teotihuacan Hall. Teotihuacan was an ancient Mesoamerican city that is found within the present-day state of Mexico. I believe one of the most famous contributions of Teotihuacan to history is their pyramids, uh, particularly the pyramids of the sun and moon. Now, when you think of pyramids in the Americas, usually your mind will go to the pyramids built by the Aztecs or Mayans. But the people of Teotihuacan also built their own pyramids. In fact, the pyramids of the sun and moon were built around a thousand years before the Aztecs even arrived. And when the Aztecs arrived, Teotihuacan was already in ruins. I can just imagine that when the Aztecs arrived in Teotihuacan and saw two pyramids in the cities, they went, It's free real estate. And then decided to inhabit the city and adopt some Teotihuacan culture. Now, the unfortunate thing is that not much is known about Teotihuacan. Most of their culture, language, and even people are shrouded in mystery. The only things that we do know are the things that we and the Aztecs have found. And from those things, we can only hypothesize and discuss. And this is the thing that I think is what makes history so interesting. Is that in history, there is always a mystery that is waiting to be uncovered. Secrets that are waiting to be unveiled. But until then, we can only imagine. For the next area, I went to the second floor of the right side of the museum. Time check, we only have around 30 minutes remaining. So I was scrambling to get as many shots as I can, and I decided to just check my pictures when I'm back from this trip. So on the second floor, it shows us the history of when Spain colonized Mexico and how the Mexican cultures adapted to the culture forced by the Spanish colonizers. It details the changes in the economy, local industries, family, government positions, religious activities, and a lot of other things. It details the events during the Spanish time. Fortunately, I only skimmed through this area because, again, I was already running out of time. I thought that I could just look them up because this is part of Mexican history that is most likely well documented, unlike the earlier exhibit of Teotihuacan. Also, as a Filipino, I can already imagine how the Spaniards affected Mexican culture anyway. And as time is almost up, with just 5 minutes remaining, we decided to go for one last hurrah and went to the hall of Mexico, Tenochtitlan. I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that. <laughs> anyway, Tenochtitlan was the capital of the Aztec Empire and is located in present-day Mexico City. It has a very interesting history that it was originally built on an islet in Lake Texcoco which is mostly dried up today as far as I understand. And I highly recommend you guys to go and read about it. Anyway, in this museum hall, 
You would get a scale model of the city. You would see the architecture of the buildings. You would learn how their markets operate, how the Aztecs live, and a lot of other things. Overall, you would get an idea of how prosperous the city of Tenochtitlan was for the arrival of the Spaniards. Ah, and it looks like the time is up. Unfortunately, with our limited time, and even though I was growing as fast as I could, I only managed to explore half of the museum. Well, I guess that's only to be expected since we still needed to go to other places today. And actually, I'm completely fine with that. I learned a lot and enjoyed this museum visit, even though we only had a limited time. This just means that the next time I come back to Mexico, I know that I'll be coming back to this museum to finish what I started. So, after our visit to the museum, we decided to go to a nearby park which reminded me of Burnham Park in Baguio City back in the Philippines. We tried to go to the zoo but we weren't expecting this many people around and we were already getting hungry so we decided to head back to the car and find a place to eat. After having lunch, we decided to walk around Mexico City and boy, was there a lot of people. And I mean a lot, because the streets were nearly flooded with people. Also, there were a lot of things going on like cosplays, musical performances, dancing, haggling, etc. It's just unfortunate that since I took a lot of footage of the museum, my phone's battery was dying so I was only able to take a few shots of the place. But I eventually found out why there were a lot of people. Because when we reached the historic center of Mexico City, there was this event that was taking place in Zocalo or the plaza. There were a lot of flowers on display that formed different figures and establishments that people lined up to go walk on a scaffold bridge to get a better view of. There were also these two big outdoor event tents where I think people go to see performances or to buy souvenirs. I don't know if this event is part of a cultural festival or a tourism campaign, but I think it's the latter because of the hashtag Yucatan Escolor which translate to Yucatan is color in English. I think they want to showcase how beautiful the state of Yucatan is. Like the nature, the cities, the history, food, everything that Yucatan has to offer will give color to your journey. So go and book your trip. There's a whole experience waiting for you. Just grab the opportunity. But don't ask me, I haven't been there. <laughs> I only got that information from Google. <laughs> you won't see Yucatan in the series. Maybe in the future, I don't know. Anyway, after exploring around for a bit, it was getting late and we were already tired, so we decided to head back. But that's not the end of the story, because on the way back, our driver actually called and hooked us up with another Filipino who lives near the place we stay. And what can I say? It was the start of another wonderful journey that you will get to see in the next video. Thanks for watching.